What's up everybody, today we're going to be talking about what other photography you may need when doing photographs. The list of accessories is endless and it all depends on what you're shooting and how you shoot as to what sort of things they can get. So starting with some of the basics, what you can do is you can get a battery grip. So that goes on your camera and that adds in extra batteries so your camera will last longer when taking photographs or recording video. The other bonus of that is it has a grip so when you're holding your camera horizontal you can take your picture but when you hold it vertical the same grip is there so you don't have to hold your hand around like that. You can use the battery grip and take images. The other thing on the front of your lenses is you can get different filters. So on the front of your lens it'll tell you what size millimeter diameter is so you can get screw-on filters. There's a whole range of different filters. A lot of people use UV filters to protect their lens so you put that on the front that's just a clear glass and that'll protect your lens if it gets banned. The filter that I have on most of my lenses is a variable ND filter so when I'm doing video I can shoot at the appropriate settings that I want and if it's still too bright I can adjust this ND filter and that brings it down. So for example here I can just twist it and as you can see there that changes the settings on the video. And just like that, I can make the image brighter or I can make the image darker. So depending on what I need, that's easily done. There's also just your standard ND filters which come in different densities so you can have a really dark one or a really light one. A lot of landscape photographers use these so for example if you want to take an image of a river or a stream and you want the water to look like it's glass so you capture all that movement what you have to do is use a long shutter speed however if you're doing that in the daytime it's just going to blow it out completely so if you put the ND filter on you can make the image darker and you can use that long exposure so you can grab that image perfectly. At the other end of the spectrum you can get other things that are very creative Creative. So you can get macro filters, so you can have your one, two, four, eight close-up and that is when you put the filter on. It's like a magnifying glass so it zooms in the image without the need for a macro lens. There's things like star filters as well so you can get a four star, a six star and eight star. And basically that means is when you take a picture and it's got a light in the background, when the light hits the lens it'll actually give off star trails off that light. So if you want to create something really unique and different then you can use that. There's a whole bunch of different filters so what you can do is you can go on eBay, if you get your filter size you can put in like 62 millimeter filter put that in it'll bring up loads of different options and loads of different things so you can get that get creative or like I said a lot of people use UV filters just to protect the glass on the lens it's up to you next thing on the list tripods so this camera's currently on a tripod now obviously doing video work like this this comes in really handy for me so I can set up the camera I can leave it and I can shoot myself doing these videos a lot of people with landscapes use it so if you're using the long exposure it keeps the camera steady if you're doing macro work or product work it's really handy to have the camera set up on a tripod so you can set it away and if you need to make slight adjustments you can just move it slightly rather than having to take a picture look at it think oh that's different I need to remember where you were and redo it and do it that way sometimes when I'm shooting as well in the studio doing portraits and commercial work and things like that sometimes I can use a tripod so if we're doing clothing and we have the lighting set up put the camera on a tripod shoot that and then no matter what the camera's in the same place at the same time with the same lights so all you have to do Take the pictures and it's really easy to edit and everything looks exactly the same. So for example, if you're using e-commerce for clothing, then all of the images are going to be the same. It's going to be the same angle, same height, same everything. So everything is going to be concurrent. Next up, camera bag. So if you're getting a lot of this equipment, then you're going to need a bag to put it in. I've gone through a whole range of things. So you had your shoulder bags, you had your backpacks, and now I've gone under a roller bag. So as you can see here, this is my roller bag. And inside of there, I've got all the cameras, lenses, lights, and things like that that I need for my daily use. And obviously in the pockets, you have options for filters, lenses, cards, whatever you need. The main reason that I switch from that is when you're having a backpack sometimes it'll hurt your back if you're using it for a long time. However the roller bag you can use it as a backpack and you can also use it as a roll along. So all I have to do is when I'm going anywhere to the car or anything like that pull up the handle and I could just pull the bag and it's much easier to carry it all. Especially when you've got a lot of equipment and the equipment starts to get heavy so much easier. To go along with your flashes is you need some triggers. Like I said the majority of my stuff is from Godox however this trigger is from Pixar Pro but you can get the Godox option as well. What that does is sits on your hot shoe on your camera that syncs up with the flash so you can actually change the flash settings by using the trigger on top of the camera. So if you're on location you have lights set up quite far away instead of going back and forward to the flash to turn the power up and turn the power down you can just use the trigger take a shot if it doesn't if it's not bright enough then you can just adjust it turn the brightness up and take the next one. It's super useful and definitely something that you need to do if you're going to use off camera flash. In the past I've used different triggers so I've used the ones that's connected to your camera and the flash and use infrared. It's okay if you work in the studio however if you're on location if the sun's bright then the infrared doesn't work so it doesn't fire it and again with that you can't change the power of the flash so if you need to change the flash you would have to go to the flash change the power come back and shoot. 
Something which you may or may not need is lighting modifiers. Like I said, with the flashes, you have the holder, which the flash goes into, and there's an actual mount on the front for a Bowens mount or whatever other mount you want to use. And what you can do is add these attachments. So you can see here, you've got the strip boxes, we've got an Octobox lighting me up, got beauty dishes, got loads of different things that you can use. You don't actually need them. You can use the flash bare bulb. However, if you want to create different styles of images and sculpt the light to whatever you need, then this is where the modifiers come into play. Not related to photography, more video. However, you can get microphones as well. So you can get a shotgun mic, which goes on the top, which is commonly like a Rode, or I've been using Comica a lot lately for audio. Or you can get something like a microphone with a lavalier or a wireless microphone. So you can have that plugged in the camera and the person speaking can use that microphone as well. Like on this video, we're using the Comica Boom XD. So I've got a transmitter right here and also the receivers on the camera. So whenever I'm talking, it's recording the audio to the camera. Other additional things to get is additional cards and additional batteries. If you're taking photos and it's very cold, then obviously your batteries are going to run down much quicker. So if you've only got one battery that come with a camera, if you're taking pictures and you're getting some really good shots and it's really cold and the battery runs down straight away, then you're a bit knackered. So it's always good to have loads of spare batteries and also the same with cards. So with some digital cameras, you get an option to shoot with to two cards or just one card. If you're shooting to just one card, that'll just take your images. And if you're shooting raw, then that'll write all of those images. Once that card's full, then that's it. You'd have to get another card in and go from there. But should something happen to that card, then all of your images will be lost. However, with the dual card systems in cameras, you can either shoot RAW and JPEG or RAW to both or something like that. So you have the two cards and they've both got the same images on. So if one card corrupts, then you've still got the other card to use. So that's why it's always handy to have multiple cards so you can write to two cards at the same time and have the spare cards for when those get full and put the next images on. Like I said at the beginning, there's multiple different accessories which you can get for cameras and photography and things like that. So all of it isn't covered here, but that's some of the, the basics that I use and what I think you would benefit from having. If you think there's something that I've missed, please let me know. And in the next video, when I record something like this, I'll make sure to include it. Hopefully your bank balance isn't gonna get hurt too much with all of this, but like the same as me, I'm always going on and seeing new things. I think I need that, I need that, I need that. Spending more and more money. For some people, it's a very expensive hobby, but if that's what you enjoy doing, then that's what you enjoy doing. So let's continue on with the course.